Hello and welcome back to this new tutorial. This is actually my first tutorial on doing C++ using Unreal Engine 4. So in this video we'll be looking at doing line traces. Uh, line traces in C++ are a bit more difficult as we're going to also look at doing debugging line traces, actually adding markers on screen so you can see how that line trace works. So in blueprints you can simply do a line trace by channel, uh, you get these things, you get the star end nodes, the trace channel, the complex complexity, if you want to draw a debug, the colors, everything like that. You get that all in one simple node. In programming you have to do a little bit more. So I'm actually just using the base first person character template class here. All I've done really is I've gotten rid of a few things, um, I don't need that anymore either. I've gotten rid of the skeletal meshes, the VR and touch input things, just stuff like that that I really don't need. Um, I've also binded the action fire onto on fire here which I think should be done by default. I think I just accidentally deleted it. And I've added this, it's the void for line trace. So that's a here, it's a protected function and it's just called line trace. And I've got on fire, on fire, we're going to call line trace. So when we fire it, instead of shooting a projectile, we're just going to shoot out this trace. So let's get started. So it's actually not too difficult to do the actual line trace, it's just how we want to store things and make it easier for ourselves. So the first things first, we need an f hit result, which we'll call hit. An f hit result stores all the information of a trace channel if it hits something. So the information of what it hits, where it hits, the location in the world it hits, the normals, all that kind of information that we need. All right. Next, we're going to want two f vectors. We're going to want the start vector, and that's going to equal our, I'm going to use our camera, so first person camera component get component location we need a, another vector which is our end vector and that's the start vector plus get our camera component, I've just copied and pasted the name here, uh, get its forward vector, so the direction the camera is looking in, and multiply this by a flow, and that flow is the distance we want to look. So if you're doing a gun, it'd probably be like a few thousand meters. However, I want it to be something simple that we can look at and use the debug traces for. So I'm going to actually use 500, and that's 500 unreal units, which means it's going to be about five meters. Now you could use a variable for that. Flow trace distance equals five hundred. And that's probably a better way to do it. And lastly we need to actually call the line trace. So to call line trace, we can't just do a line trace by single we have to actually call it from the world that the player is in. So we have to get the world, call a line trace by channel, we'll do a single line trace, and now we want to pass over the variables that we're going to use. As you can see, all the information has been passed by its memory address, and this is to save on memory and optimization features, but also things like the f hit result actually need changing, but the start and end don't. So we need to pass our hit, that's our f hit result, all the information we want to get stored in there. We want to pass the start location, so that's our start vector. Our end vector, the trace channel is going to be ECC camera, uh, or whatever trace channel you want it to be. And those are the four variables we actually need to pass to be able to get the function to work. Everything else is the collision query parameters and all that you don't need to pass, but you can if you want to do something special with them. In our case, just a simple line trace is fine. So 
we're going to want to check if this works by saying OK if hit.bblockerkit is true then let's use an, uh, a UE log and we want to use log temp warning text hit else now we can just copy paste this UE log not hits. So this is the basic uh, log format you can use. This will log it directly to the output log here. It won't go onto the screen. So this is useful to have in your games when you want to log information. But obviously, don't want it to clog up the screen. But you need to know what the values are. So I've just uh, I'm going to add some brackets here for these because we will be changing this information. to add a semicolon here. Okay now we're going to compile that and I'll get back to you when it's compiled. Okay so that's been compiled so now when we play you can see I've got my output log here tab open underneath the window and when I fire we're going to get hit and not hit. So when I'm not five meters from anything I'm not hitting it with our line trace but when I am as you can see hit hit not hit okay so the line trace is obviously working that's all well and good that's what we need to know the information's working but what about when we want to know if it's actually hitting the correct things or if we're getting the correct information back from it we want to add some sort of ability to be able to debug this well we can what we need to do is include the library that will allow us to draw a debug line between the start and end points like we get using blueprints. To do that we need to do hash include draw debug helpers .h. That's the only library we need to include. Now down in our line trace we're actually going to add this information. We can do draw debug line draw debug line uh, we want to get the world we're in then we want to use our hit dot start hit dot trace end we want to also assign a color as you can see and we'll use the color f color double colon red Persistent lines means that the line trace stays there until you call a clear function. We don't want that. Uh, the lifetime is obviously how long these last until they fade away. So we're going to say about 10 seconds so we can get a good look at what's going on. The depth priority is zero, so it wants to hit the first thing. And the thickness, well, we want to make these really kind of visible. So we'll put that at a value of 10. Now those last ones are up to you to choose as well as this. So I prefer putting all the information there I can because then I know I'm, I'm getting exactly the kind of debug lines I want. Now when we compile again and hit play, you'll see when I use it we're now getting these debug lines. Saying we're hitting this and we can clearly see we're hitting it, the trace is going through it. And then when we're not hitting it we can see that one clearly just ends before it hits the lamppost. That's great, but the issue is the red ones are going right through it when it hits it. So it's kind of confusing because you can be like, well, is it hitting it or not? I want something a bit more visual. Well, this is what we're going to do now. We're going to use two ways of giving us some visual feedback of when it hits it and when it doesn't. So the first way we're going to do is just change the color. So we're going to add a trace color variable up here using f color and we're going to set this as default to red uh, I mean f color double colon red 
I'm going to add the draw debug line after we check the blocking hit. And what we're going to say is if it hits the blocking hit, then log that it's hit it and change the trace color equal to f color, we'll say blue. Otherwise, put our trace color back to f color red. Blue if it hits, red if it doesn't. Okay, now we've got the trace color being changed, we can remove this f color red from here and add our trace color variable. Now whatever color this is set to, our debug line will use. So let's hit compile. Now when we play, we'll see that we've got a blue line when it's hit something, so we can be like, okay, that's definitely hit that. And we get a red line when we don't hit anything. So we can just shoot a couple of those. And we'll see that, yep, that's working out very well. Definitely getting the blues when we hit and the reds when we don't. And now another thing we can actually set is that this still goes through this object here when it hits it. And if you don't want that to happen, if you want your line trace to just sort of stop dead when it hits it, and that's the only information you want to see, we can actually change its end location. So now we've used the line trace, we can just reuse this end vector. If it hits, then the end vector we can say is equal to the hit dot location, and this is the location in the world that the line trace has hit an object. And then we can use instead of trace end, we'll do end vector, because that is the location that the trace does end. We can use uh, the start vector here instead of trace start because we have passed that information to our line trace. However, this is easier. Uh, the hit dot trace start and hit dot trace end is useful for when you're not storing the start and end vector. Let's hit compile one more time and hit play. And now we'll see no matter how close I get to this, when we hit that lamppost, the trace is ending there. However, obviously when we miss that lamppost, it's continuing into its full trajectory. Yep, same with the bus and the buildings. So it's working perfectly fine. And that is how you use line tracing and debugging in C++ to get the line trace you want and how to create it, set it up and set it to collide with the collision profile you want and how to also use debug API in the Unreal Engine 4 to be able to give us visual information and feedback on whether it is working how we want it to. And we also had a quick look at using UE logs to output to the output log and give us a quick temporary look at what's going on in the game. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did and dislike if you didn't. Subscribe if you want to see more game dev videos in general from me. And I hope to see you next time. Thank you. Bye.